Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh is trying to squeeze out every bit of Crosby, Malkin, Latang. Yeah, makes sense for the know, deals they gave yeah, up. Yeah, before you know they retire and you're gonna have to like rebuild. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the BTR podcast. Before we get started, like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you guys follow our socials, especially our Instagram, TikTok, and our YouTube shorts. We drop daily content there. And, you know, if you're an audio listener, whatever audio platform you listen on, make sure you guys download it. And if you enjoy it, give us a five-star rating as well. Um, without a further ado, let's get into it. Um, for a uh, middle, uh, middle of August, beginning of August, we're getting some news outside of the EPL, NFL, and even... MLB MLB, because we got big news in the NBA and we got big news in the NHL we'll start off with the NHL one because that happened earlier today at the time of this recording it Eric Carlson it was a a name we mentioned Uh, you said that the Sharks have to trade him and they were being a little greedy with the the value and all that but he finally got traded by the time when we woke up this morning essentially Um, he's officially a Pittsburgh Penguin yeah so Eric Carlson 11 and a half million contract actually finally got dealt obviously it helps when you win the norris trophy and you have a resurgent but pittsburgh gets eric carlson it's also a three-team deal by the way yeah. when montreal pittsburgh gets eric carlson forward rem pitlick prospect forward dylan hamulek and san jose's 2026 third round pick okay sharks get mikhail grandland and mike hoffman defenseman nyan ruta and pittsburgh's 2024 first rounder top 10 protected Montreal gets defenseman Jeff Petrie, goalie Casey DeSmith, prospect forward Nathan Laguerre, and Pittsburgh's 2025 second round pick. San Jose retain 1.5 million of the Carlson contract, and the Pittsburgh will retain 25%, up so it's close to 1.6 AAV for the Petrie contract, and Montreal retains a zero salary. Okay, so, yeah, no, it makes sense because, like, 11.5 million is still a lot, and teams are still going to be skeptical. Is Eric Carlson going to drop that um, production again next year? And and Pittsburgh was heavily rumored, and Carolina were heavily rumored, right? People threw in Seattle just because of their cap space. But Pittsburgh, you know, I think a couple of pod episodes ago, we said Crosby and Latang really wanted him. And if you're going to listen to Crosby and Latang, so... They, they made it work. They needed a third team. Obviously, Jeff Petrie had to go somewhere. Um, and obviously, it made a lot of sense. Um, Pittsburgh side of things. Yeah, let's see. Does, does this help? Does it help them put it over the top? I don't it, think so. Uh, it, it depends, really. For me, because um, pressure's off the tank now, right? Of being the top guy. Yeah. Uh, the tank's 36. Carlson's old himself. So, I mean, they got someone on the right side who can move the puck. So it does help him a little bit right there in that aspect. If you get the same production that he did last year, he's not dropping hundred. Yeah, the no, reason like, why he, he gets, dropped the reason why he dropped hundred was he was on shitty side. Yeah, I know, but like, like if he gets like 70, 80, that's still solid. Yeah, that's solid. Like seventy right? with that. And, and, yeah. Yeah, and another thing with this move is like Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is trying to squeeze out every bit of Crosby, Malkin, Latang. Yeah, before, makes sense with you know, the deals they gave yeah, up. Yeah, before you know they retire and you're gonna have to like rebuild. So yeah, they're just trying to squeeze out whatever they have left. Yeah, with, um, that, with the roster they have. Disappointing way to not make the playoffs. We would not be talking about Florida having the Cinderella run in the final if Pittsburgh just beat in Chicago. Chicago, right? So, and uh, obviously you brought back Malkin last year to a, like a hefty deal. Chris Latang is back, and we don't like obviously Chris Latang's injury histories and health concerns have been pretty big. Um, Eric Carlson, you know, like to piggyback your point before um, when you said the Sharks have to do whatever they have to do to trade them, get on them because they got off a lot of money. Even one and a half million is whatever to them at this point. They got a first round pick out of it. They got a they don't yeah. So they got the, only the first round pick out of it. I'm I'm not gonna talk about the prospects. I, I doubt you know much about, I don't the, know prospects. about the prospects. So we're not gonna mention the prospects. Hopefully they turn out to something. But it made sense. They they got it done. They have a le- well ten and a ha- uh, sorry one and a half retained so about ten million off the books now. But you still have to deal with a Hoffman contract, which is I only think Hoffman one year. might be on his last year. I think it's one year, but there's another one. Who's the other guy they got? In? Mikhail Grand. Mikhail Grand in contract. That's, that's the a, big one. I think he also has years. another. He has a yeah well, that's two years. Two years. Because that trade made no sense for Pittsburgh to make at the time they made that trade. They had to know Pittsburgh had to get rid of these guys. Yeah, yeah no, but what I'm saying is the original himself. Pittsburgh trade. It was such a bad trade. They went from rumored JT Miller trade to getting Mikhail Granlin. And it's not like they 
obviously did not help them do shit, right? And they had to get off of their contract. Yeah, so, I mean, San Jose, I feel like they kind of... I don't know. I, I don't know. They're just off the books. I, I'm off, fine with it. They're off the books. They're off the books for like, by how much? We don't even know that much well, because he, like think two about years. It. I mean, yeah, you got like five he, years, like 11 and a half, right? They got lucky. Well, not lucky. Okay, you can say lucky as well, but Eric Carlson performed, right? Otherwise, he was an untradeable contract. Yeah, yeah, At least right, they, yeah. they, um, what's the word? The timing was perfect for them to trade him. And if it didn't, then it would have been an issue, right? So, they traded him at the right time, like you were saying, that they had to trade him because you'll never find a higher value than this. Perfect, yeah, right? Yeah, like, and to. even then, even trading him now, there's a reason why he didn't get traded at the deadline because they were asking too much, right? 11 and a half million. Like, there's a reason why Edmonton went the Ekholm route because they wanted like two firsts or whatever the case may be. But again, is Eric Carlson going to be Eric Carlson? Yes, he'll get motivated on a winning team, winning, uh, like you have Crosby, arguably one of the top five players of all time, right? You have Malkin, one of the top 25 players of all time. Latang's uh, Gensel's the- injured, but when Gensel comes back, you got him as well. Yeah. So, I mean, the team is definitely better, that's for sure. And I think, do believe Pittsburgh did get better with adding Carlson. So, uh, yeah, and he's, like I said, like I'm saying what I said earlier, he's motivated. Right, he wants to win. He said he wants to win. He loves San Jose. He still has a house and family. He wants to live in San Jose, but he understands that this is a business decision, and it makes a total lot of sense to do this uh, for Eric Carlson and Pittsburgh. Who are they realistically going to get to make some over the top? They spend a lot of money in Tristan Jari, um, so you still their defense. Yeah, his is Eric Carlson a high level defender now? No, you're you're betting his on his offense. So can and same thing with Chris Letang. I understand. He's old, right? Like, how, how much is his defensive capability going to be? But to your point, pocket driving ability from the back end, especially on the right side, it's going to be elite. Yeah, and pressures off Latang. That's one key thing there. A right, quick last mention about San Jose is that uh, they traded Burns, they traded Meyer, and they traded Carlson. Only got two first round picks in return. But I mean, at, at that, it's still, I think they could have gone a little bit more. But it's tough because like they were hand tied. They know yeah. that they were hand tied. Like it was like the Canucks, right? They're, like they're hand tied, and not to make it about the Canucks, but I'm just saying like they still have Mark Edward Vlasic on that contract still there. You extended Thomas Hurdle to yeah, this yeah, point it makes Thomas no Hurdle, sense yeah. either, right? So they were ha- uh, hand tied. Can even if they want to get rid of Hurdle now, they might have to like give away something. So maybe one of these prospects or something like that. But yeah. Um, Go on San Jose to get off the contract. That's that's the main thing. Uh, yeah. To move the player at the right, perfect timing. Right? They didn't want to, you know, their GM is not stupid enough to bank on, oh, Carlson's back. Let's go for a playoff run. Oh, yeah, they're nowhere near. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we've, see, we've seen that happen in Vancouver with Jim I know, Benning, but, I'm so, saying like, but I'm just saying in general. If, Carl, if Carlson gives you 100 points Greer, Greer and you don't no, make the playoffs. Greer, no, Greer knows that. He's like, he said himself that they, uh, it's the rebuild stage. There's a reason why they got rid of Timo Meyer then. Yeah, no. Right? So, yeah, like, well, like, Carlson got you 100 points and you got nowhere. So, yeah. So, um, quick mention about Montreal. They added Jeff Petrie, Casey DeSmith. I feel like they were just there just to, you know. They're just a filler team. They were just nothing a filler else. team, right? Like, nothing major happened for them. They, mean, got, they got off of Mike Hoffman's contract. They got off Mike Hoffman's contract. But then they bring contract, in Petrie's contract. But, yeah, no, but like, retained. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh retains like 25% yeah. of that. And Petrie's still, you know, a decent defender. Good veteran defender. Maybe if Ryan Backer plays in the first year. Yeah. Could pair him up with that. But, and also Casey DeSmith, the backup goalie. Then again, we never know what the Carey Price situation. So yeah, yeah. Um, so moving on uh, from the Eric Carlson trade, well, like I said, we're intrigued to see what happens there. One major signing finally happened today. Um, I got a right shot demon finally gets paid, but not like a hefty price. Again, a lot of one year deals, and this is one of them. Arizona, which everybody projected him to go to, is Matt Dumba. He leaves the Minnesota Wild on a free agency. Right shot demon, obviously looking for a lot of money um didn't get it like at least longevity wise and he signs a one-year prove it deal with 3.9 million around there i would say i think is around there uh, uh yeah he was rumored for arizona for a while and obviously it's a little bit surprising because when he thought like right shot defenseman you thought he'll be like getting paid right yeah long term no. and like you know probably some sort of price it's that's the hit that's the world we live in with the hard cap yeah, yeah as well that too but I'm, i don't think dumba's defensive abilities are the greatest either yeah, there he's like more of a power play specialist. Yeah, so he's um, more like and a, obviously a hitter, like a power yeah, guy yeah. too. Like he, like for example, the Canucks need defensemen, and, and there's no way he's a, like, like for example, if he had traded away Tyler Myers, like how you want to kind of trade him away, um, is Matt Dumba really an upgrade? 
Not really. So yeah. um, that yeah, maybe one not year defen- con- like this. Not contract, a defensive upgrade. That's yeah, sure. like you're you're not putting him with Quinn Hughes. Yeah, you like can't. he's still gonna be our third shot. Sorry, third line demon, right? So that's like one team the Canucks were linked to dump up for that reason. But like you said, the defensive capabilities aren't there, and on top of that, no one is w- willing to give long term deals because, of, or even players don't want to sign long term deals because of potential cap rise. Rise, right? So yeah, so they're just. Trying to bank out too, and it's good on good on Arizona. Like people go to Arizona um, at Mullet Arena still, and uh, you get to show your game a little bit and be a trade deadline acquisition for a team, right? It's like similar to what Max Domi did with Chicago. I mean, Arizona did have like a decent year. Like they didn't they didn't completely like, shit the open. bed. They, they, they did good at home because yeah, right. <laughs> that's why it was Arizona because of what the away team's locker room was absolutely garbage. <laughs> From well, the supposed alleged pictures we've seen, yeah, yeah. Um, so let me just double check if we see in anything else. Um, but yeah, I believe that's a three point nine million dollar um, contract. Re- Flyers resign goalie Samuel Erson to a two year, two point nine million dollar contract extension. I'll be honest. Oh, with you. I have no idea who that is. Tom Wilson. Well, yeah, Tom Wilson got extended. Huge, yeah. huge news. Okay, so we already talked about just to confirm. We did Troy Terry last time, right? Yeah, we did Troy okay, Terry. Okay, so yeah, so this is the next day. Tom Wilson. Okay, completely forgot about this one. Big extension. Head scratching extension. I think this is just like loyalty extension. Seven years, forty five point five million for a guy that isn't like your aggressive. primary scorer. He's, not <laughs> like your he's best, like yeah. your yeah, like your grinder aggressive. He's your grinder rapper. type player. Um, like because it was a uh, Rafi Torres back in the day type thing. But way better than them. But, but better, yeah. yeah. Because Wilson does score some goals, but yeah. obviously he's not like. But his primary thing isn't like to set up plays or score. Yeah, his in my opinion, at least from what I've yeah, seen. Yeah, I think I would agree with you. His primary thing is physical play. Yeah, but head scratching, right? Like I understand. I think it's a lot. Like, is this an Ovechkin thing? Like, keep let it make sure he's here. I don't know. Like, obviously, Washington's biggest focus right now is to get Was- uh, Ovechkin the record. You know, and who knows how long that will take? Ovechkin again. Hopefully, he has a healthy year and play- plays it well. Ovechkin should have had the record by now if it wasn't for the first year lockout, the half year lockout. And, the COVID and then the COVID, two COVID years, right? Two COVID so, years, yeah. Um, so he had a bunch of shortened years. He had a bunch of shortened years, even though people want to say he had more games, but he also had less time. And more time to do it, but not really in terms of games played. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of like actual years, if you look at it, he missed his rookie year where he had yeah, like 50 yeah. goals. So yeah, uh, head scratching signing still for me. Um, it's just like, I think it's just like a loyalty high. Yeah, it's thing. like a loyalty. And, but how are you going to trade this contract? Even. Can't really, right? How are you going to bury Washington, this contract? Right, realistically, what, what? I don't think Washington and like Pittsburgh are in a position to squeeze out those last years of Crosby yeah, because they're still, they were still competitive right? last year. Washington's not to squeeze out the last years of Ovechkin, and obviously you're gonna have to go to rebuild mode once Ovechkin retires. So yeah, um, yeah. So like it's definitely we'll seven see. years is long. Yeah, if it was like three years, maybe could have been better. Yeah, I think that yeah, that's it for the NHL we have right now. Yeah. But, Moving on, let's go. Let's, speaking of contracts, speaking of signings, let's just go to the NBA because they decided to do a major thing. No, James Harden, Damian Lillard, Pascal Siakam, whoever else was on the trade block, no one did not traded. get traded. But a, a major extension happened, and there's a reason why I'm wearing this shirt today. Um, um, Anthony Davis extended with the Lakers three years. Let me get the exact number. It is the richest contract extension in history. To average, it averages $62 million a year. But again, it's the new NBA. It's still less than, I think, what... Um, um, Jalen Brown. Brown or whatever uh, got extended for, what, but no, like per year contract, isn't it more than Jalen Brown? Oh yeah, per year, yeah. Um, but obviously Jalen Brown, like in total, is three hundred five million. Yeah, so uh, three years, one eighty six million max extension, uh, sixty two million average, thirty year old right now. So and he still has, I think, two more years on his current deal. So yeah, five years. So this up. will run through the twenty. 526 year so he so, still has I mean, like a couple more years by on. then you're anticipating the cap to go up right yeah so. oh no, sorry it kicks in the 25 26 year and it ends in 28 okay so so by then it's the nba we know the cap's gonna go crazy like, right cap I'm not, i won't up. be surprised if the next person to sign after jason tatum will eventually rise to like 400 million like who's who's this year's rookie yeah, Wambanyama. Uh, Wambanyama. He might sign a four hundred dollar, more four hundred million dollar contract in his second contract or even his rookie extension. Yeah, right? if, so, he, if he balls out like how he's yeah, yeah, to. Yeah, I'm just assuming. <laughs> um, but. Yeah, um, I, I mean, it makes sense. Obviously, the price tag, if you're looking at it right now, a lot of people are going to say it's pretty big. Listen, his, his For a guy who's pretty in- inconsistent, let's be honest, right? Well, okay, his but, play still d- deserves the contract. It's just, can he 
be on the floor for the contract, right? And, and a little bit more consistency. He like was consistency one, is an issue. You gotta, yeah, you gotta that's fine. That. But his defense, he's arguable second top two defend, uh, defender in the league. Your choice if you want to put Drew Holiday, Giannis, whoever. Like he's top five for sure, arguable top two, top three, right? Um, offensively, we uh, it's... Inconsistent. In the playoffs, it was inconsistent, but he's shown weeks two weeks of like in the regular season that he was arguably mvp before he got that injury came back same thing happened right so for me i'm fine with the contract lakers they're gonna never really rebuild if they do rebuild they're gonna end up trading things like they did with uh for anthony davis and they're gonna end up getting a signing anyways right lebron now the question is this is last year of lebron most likely unless we somehow first of all assuming Bronny is healthy and able to play because we want to consider that a f- thing yeah, that's a fact and if now. he if he does play and gets drafted and if it's not by the lakers and lebron's last year with the lakers should be next year um if he does play then lebron obviously stays one more year and so we'll go from there but kind who are you going to partner anthony davis with is the is the big question and yeah like w- the one beauty thing with the nba the opposite of the nhl and even mlb you don't get free agents after 10, 12 years or yeah. eight years, right? You get free agency after three three to five years. You may have like, in the NBA, there's like too much player movement. And then, yeah, trades could happen, right? Like hypothetical situation, Luca's unhappy. He could be available. Hypothetical situation. Yeah, I, I heard Trey Young's name pop up. He's still a pretty good player, right? Yeah, defense isn't there, but you figure stuff out that way. So, um, yeah, I, like I'm fine with the extension. It's as as long as he's on the court that's the main thing for me uh, yeah so it just uh, for me i think i'll just put in all terms like i even put injuries and in, inconsistency because when you're playing good get hurt come back you're not the same player and then yeah. you have to you know ramp it up again then you finally ramp it up go on there a little 10 game hot streak get injured again so it, it's like a it's like a pattern he's stuck in that he needs to get out of hopefully yeah um otherwise he's shown in the past or what type of player he is he's a you have to admit that he's a consistent defensive player. Yeah, he's a good right? player. Offensively, let's see. how Are you going to propel your game again? Are you going to work your ass to stay healthy? And yeah, ho- hopefully that's the case. Not just for Anthony Davis. like Guys like Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, you know, and guys like that as well. We want to see all the stars play. Yeah, um, Yeah. so the, uh, congrats, Anthony Davis. And we'll see how that goes. Um, oh, big news for us being from Vancouver. Or, well, Surrey, but Vancouver area. Uh, basketball's back in Vancouver. <laughs> yeah, we got a Raptor. Raptors are back. Game. Raptors preseason versus the Sacramento Kings to kick off preseason for their Canada tour. Uh, obviously, we'll try to look into tickets and see unless someone's watching this and wants to offer us tickets. But um, yeah, Rogers try to try Arena. to watch it. I think the last time we had a, the Raptors game was I think they played um, the Warriors was the last time, which was when when Kevin Durant came. I think, but their last NBA game that happened here in um, in the preseason was I think Kawhi's first year with the Clippers against uh because yeah. it makes sense because covid happened that yeah, year yeah, as yeah. well so so first uh, nba game since 2019 in vancouver at rogers arena so i want to try to see if we could get something because I, I we've never watched an nba game rather yeah. preseason or not live we never watched right it, just so, one in general even like a professional basketball league outside of high school basketball which yeah. we have seen so yeah um that that's a that's a cool story for local guys watching this or and local guys like us but you know let's move on um Let's go. Let's go to the NFL. We'll we'll end off with the other two sports quickly here, but let's go to the NFL because we got some signings, we got the Hall of Fame news, and we got some suspension news. Big time suspension. Um, only three games for Alvin Kamara. Uh, those of you guys that don't know, Alvin Kamara, there was a situation during the Super Bowl, I believe, that yeah. there was like an altercation, and he was obviously uh, charged and then let, released. And then ultimately, he was supposed to get suspended, but I thought there was a report that he wasn't going to get suspended. But the news came out that he is getting suspended. So he got three games uh, to start the year. But, you know, you kind of want that division is weak as hell. Yes, it was weak. One of the weakest ones, in the probably the weakest one in the NFC, right? It is the weakest one. Actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so that division, in my opinion, and your opinion, I think as well, is open between all four teams. Right, like yes, they're question marks for everyone. They have Derek Carr coming in. They have an elite defense, but their coaching is questionable based on last year, Dennis Allen. And but you want to have that chemistry with Alvin Kamara and Derek Carr to start the season off as well, and the rece- with the receivers. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's definitely gonna be a four-team race again. 
I believe, right? For sure. Yeah, because yeah, like, pretty close last year, right? The news like with Baker is struggling in preseason. Who yeah. knows if he's taking the job or Kyle Trask? Uh, obviously, I love what Carolina's done. Now the question yeah, is, now can Bryce like, Young stay healthy and play in that role? And at Atlanta, the question mark for me is Desmond Ritter. And and yeah, Ritter showed some promise. And they have last uh, Taylor Heineke. Yeah, so, so the best backup boy. in the league. So <laughs> Heineke could definitely come in and do a job. That's for sure. Yeah, so Cal- uh, Alvin Kamara, three games. Um, let's see how much it impacts. Uh, but Saints are the favorite of the division. That's, yeah, because I still down. trust that defense. Cam yeah. Jordan, speaking of that, Cam Jordan also got extension. One of the the oldest guy to get a rich extension, I yeah. believe. Um, and, so, and then, speaking of the suspension of Kamara, the Colts signed a cornerback. Who was involved in the Who was involved time. in that altercation, also getting three games. Yeah, um, yeah so that's the news with Alvin Kamara. Hall of Fame. Um happened the enshrinement ceremony happened and the cup the names i recognized were like darrell revis yeah. and obviously me and you haven't we started watching football Late. outside of like casually early 2010s mid 2010s but and properly. then properly uh once our cousin set up the fantasy pool of pickums is yeah. when we like i would say we became diehard and i know you were watching a little bit before i was me. watching like probably a couple it, years before like yeah like more aggressively i guess like more as a fan overall I was watching him more as a casual, right? So, yeah. um, there's a, a Darrell Revis, a Jets legend, yeah, right? Yeah. People, some say between him and Dion Sanders as the arguable best back, D back, sorry. Yeah. And like I was listening to the Pat McAfee show and Pac Man Jones, who's also a D back himself, a defensive back. And he said, yeah, he would probably say Darrell Revis arguably is one the of the best, best defensive backs ever to play the time, game. Yeah. Um, other names before we get into the potential 2024 ballot is hold up i need to find it oh here we go it is joe thomas from the cleveland browns i've heard i've heard he was pretty good yeah um 07 to 2017 Darrell Rivas, as we mentioned same amount of time zach thomas linebacker um uh demarcus Ware. That's the one I was thinking of. Yeah, DeMarcus Ware. Uh, obviously known for his time with Dallas, but won the Super Bowl with Denver. And huge shout out to him. He also gave um, not just our favorite player, Peyton Manning, another Super Bowl, being partnered with Von Miller. But he obviously gave recognition to Demarius Thomas and the others that passed away um, this year at a young age. So, yeah, yeah DeMarcus Ware was a guy I remember watching at Denver. Um, yeah, and the rest... I'm not going to mention the rest because I don't know them well, so I don't want to say anything really. But 2000, which comes now, 2024. And there's a certain name I'm going to ask you about, and I know you've already seen the list. Yeah. I mean, quickly, first year eligibles, we'll just go over that first. Yeah. Antonio Gates, in my opinion, should get in. Yeah. Definitely known as one of the best Titans ever. Julius Peppers, Carolina legend. Uh, we're not before you continue we're not gonna com- like i know what we just said about tony gates because we kind of know about that one yeah we're not gonna comment too much because again like we mentioned we don't know how big of their how big their name was back before we started watching before we it. started watching yeah eric berry is another yeah first time eligible halo tai nagata and uh the last name andrew luck <laughs> so um let's go with theirs but then we'll get into the ones that were last year's finalists because there are some names i'm like okay they need to be in andrew luck um obviously took the reins from peyton manning was supposed to be the guy out of stanford had an amazing year years right immediately playoff team beat peyton manning to get to the conference um championship but deflate gate happened so take it how you want and then injuries were the big reason and a yeah. lot of that was because the Colts had a shitty old line and our GM at the time was trash with that it was terrible um Andrew Luck Hall of Fame potential Hall of Fame moments in the NFL but eventually did not end up with a Hall of Fame career in my opinion yeah so I think he will miss out well yeah it's, and I definitely don't the trajectory of the career was Hall of Fame it was going to be Hall of yeah. Fame right like when I mean, you look at it this guy's play was absolutely incredible and uh even when he came he made it to a second contract as well yeah even right? when he came back um the first year with yeah. P- frank reich and uh uh who's a, chris ballard as the gm gave him the proper o-line draft drafted quentin, quentin nelson, nelson. Braden smith brought in guys like shaq leonard gave you know maybe won the playoff game 
And right. won a playoff game, lost to the Chiefs. Yeah, but in 2018. So, and then obviously the year that off season, he ended up retiring, which put that's where the Colts, you know, QB carousel started. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't think he's gonna get in the Hall of Fame. Oh, he, definitely not first ballot. First ballot, definitely not. Um, even then, like what he had one AFC Championship game, no MVPs, MVP sh- years, like caliber years. Um, no Super Bowl appearances, so yeah, and yeah, he's had, he's had the stats, so I don't think he gets in. So similar question, I know his name wasn't mentioned. Luke Kuechly, same age, retired, yeah, same things. Luke Kuechly was probably like at his time, one of the best linebackers in the game. Luke Kuechly also does have a Super Bowl appearance, but has won zero depois. I don't think he won any depois either, right? I'll double check, but. No, maybe one of maybe I, I I'll double know, check, but yeah, yeah I do not remember. But Luke Kuechly was an absolute stud, that's for sure, right? So I mean, if you're looking at it comparison wise, I think Luke Kuechly has more of a chance, in my opinion. He's won Defensive Player of the Year, yeah, so okay, 2013, yeah, and yeah. a year before that is when he was drafted and won Rookie of the Year, Defensive Rookie of the Year. Okay, yeah. So, so I, he I has more him. of a case. He has a five-time All-Pro, two-time Second-Team All-Pro, seven-time Pro Bowler, two times NFL Tackle Leader, and on the 2010 All-Decade Team. Yeah, no, Luke Kuechly was So he a might star. have a chance. He'll have a he chance. He will probably have a chance. Yeah, Luke Kuechly, um, I forgot he won in his... Andrew Luck stats, I guess, very quickly. Comeback player of the year in that 2018 year. Um, four-time Pro Bowler, passing touchdown leader in 2014. And yeah, those are like the only awards in the NFL he has won. Not even Rookie of the Year? No, that was, I think, RG3 got it. Oh, wow. So Yes, no, yeah, Luke Kuechly definitely has more of a case. Yeah, Luke Kuechly definitely has more of a and case. And Luke Kuechly, you know, when he... Pl- like, when people watch... this, I think this is where I started watching, like, near Luke Kuechly's... Like end of his career, um, nah, he was an absolute stud. Yeah, he was definitely the best linebacker in the game, and then I was really surprised that he retired as well. Yeah, um, yeah, unfortunate as a Colts fan, obviously Andrew Luck. But moving on, um, best of twenty twenty three finalists, and here are some names: Dwight Freeney. Yeah, Colts legend should be should be in. In my yeah, opinion. Dwight Freeney should be in. Then it's Devin Hester. Devin Hester probably one of the best return men. Yeah. Ever. He was in that Rams, right, if I'm not mistaken? He was in he was a Chicago Bear. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Okay. Um Don't know much about Jared Allen. So I, I remember Bears played the Colts yeah. in that Super Bowl. Yeah. And I think Devin Hester in the first play returned it, took it to the house. Yeah. Um Reggie Wayne. Reggie Wayne, another Colts. Two years he's missed out now. Colts coach right now as well. Uh people said arguably should be in. Numbers are quite comparable. Wayne is trying to f- join his former teammate in Marvin Harrison. Their numbers are quite comparable. Wayne recorded 1,070 catches for 14,345 yards. You know, Marvin was slightly more, 1,102 receptions and 14,580. Wayne also posted seven straight years of 1,000 plus yards, was obviously Peyton Manning's second guy after Marvin Harrison. So yeah, uh, he should be in, in my opinion. Yeah, he should be in too. Uh, Other names... Andre Johnson, similar, Andre Johnson, similar thing. Yeah. And then, yeah, I think those are the only ones. I think there's that also we know of. Brandon Marshall. There's another name that people were debating. But, okay, okay. Yeah. I will let the football guys know because one thing I noticed, football is very opinionated in many people's eyes. Yeah, so a lot of, There's a lot of bias involved in football. Yeah, for sure. That's for sure. Cause like, fan bases, you know, I, fans I, stay true to themselves. <laughs> I know that firsthand because like posting on uh, Instagram or stories of or this or that, and the guy's like, this guy knows no ball. And... You know what? You might be right because I'm I'm late into the football game, but I'm basing it off current stuff, and yeah. So people people do get heated on their own team for sure. So it, I mean, makes sense. But yeah, um, so that's the Hall of Fame side of things. Let's get into some news that happened and some signings have occurred. And uh, did you see something that happened today? Justin Houston. Okay, okay. Outside of that one, there's a other big ones that happened. But today's signings off the bat: Miles Jack and Zach Cunningham. Have signed with the Philadelphia Eagles. They're good linebackers. They lost both the linebackers, so they're good replacements. Yeah, Miles but- Jack had a stud year with Jacksonville, who was decent for, I think, Pittsburgh as well. And Zach Cunningham, obviously, we know him through the division from ten- Houston. Houston to Tennessee. Um, so they're now Eagles, joining that stacked defense on team in general. So Yeah, I know. They, they'll, they get lost play, their they'll get play time for sure. Yeah, they lost their linebacker, so that's two good veteran replacements right um, there. You alluded to it. Um, Panthers signed Justin Houston to a year. Um, the other one that also happened was former Colt, like Justin Houston, Yannick Ngakwe 
has signed with the Chicago Bears for another year. Yeah. Ten point five million. So yeah, those are those are some of the big the big ones that occurred. Um waning NFL seasons upon us. We still have no news on Josh Jacobs. The if he gets off the franchise tag because the um, Raiders have that opportunity. The Broncos and the Chiefs are the t- favorites to land there. Um, like I said, ever since the training camp started, that running back on was went down. Obviously, the JT, even the JT talks kind of went down. They went down, though, yeah. So, well, oh, they're saying, they're saying sp- it might even get a little bit better. Speaking of Colts running back, Kenny and Drake. Uh, Kenny and Drake. Is now a Colt. And here's a, oh, this is a big extension Malik Hooker. Lee Cooker got extended. He got extended, uh, signing a three-year contract extension up to twenty-four million. That includes eight million signing bonus. Uh, yeah, so Malik Hooker was like a again. This is right before injury prone. Cold. I yeah, right before I started watching it, injuries did not help, and scheme I guess did not help when the defensive stuff changed with Eberflus coming in. Um, yeah, and now, now he's Dallas. thriving in Dallas, Dallas, which good for him, right? Like I'm nothing against him, like. Obviously, when you read, when I look at that draft, I hope I wished we picked someone else. Obviously, that was available, but it is what it is. Sometimes you just have to leave to find out where you best belong, and and I'm happy for Malik Hooker in that sense. So yeah, you know, formidable, formidable, it's now all safety, yeah, safety with you know, ahead of him now, Stephon Gilmore with Trayvon Dix. So yeah, I mean, their secondary looked a little bit better with Gilmore. Yeah, um, and then obviously Tra- Diggs has gotten his money as well. So, oh, and then uh, preseason games outside of the Hall of Fame game that just happened. Start this week. Zach Wilson is going to take Aaron Rodgers' job. Okay, <laughs> you yeah. see those throws? Yeah, he made some No, some obviously, dogs. I'm kidding. But he will eventually succeed him. I don't think they'll get rid of him unless someone team really needs a quarterback and he's just saying. Like they can't really retain him then? Yeah. Um, Cameron Jordan, as I mentioned earlier, was a two-year, $27.5 million extension. Uh, is one of the most beloved players in franchise history. Now on track to spend his acri- entire career with the New, New Orleans, Orleans Saints. Um, and yeah, that's, that's it. That's it for that. I see here. Moving on to some quick fire topics, very quickly. Um, Diana Taurasi. Uh, 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 let's just start with there. Congratulations, first ever um, WNBA player to hit ten thousand points. Now, that sounds like super less because LeBron just hit almost 40 with 38K. Difference is the season's length is longer. Yes. For the NBA, sorry. NBA the, season's longer. And obviously... Minutes. Minutes and all that is sh- shorter in the WNBA. But, you know, she's arguably the GOAT woman's uh, WNBA GOAT. And you got to give congratulations. Um, Diana Taurasi has been doing it for a while, four-time NBA, WNBA champ. And hit 10K points. First player to ever do it. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, um, I mean, just give props to one of the goats for sure. Uh, Tarasi been doing it for Phoenix Mercury. Yeah, for the longest forever. Time. <laughs> so um, Sue Bird just retired. So this could arguably be Tarasi's last year as yeah. well. Yeah. So congratulations once again to a legend. Um, moving on, we've got some big news in the boxing world. Um no, it's not the Jake Paul win over Nate Diaz, but it's a fight that was supposed to happen this weekend. Anthony Joshua versus Dillian White. Fortunately, that fight, that match at least will be, uh, that boxing fight will be no longer happening. We don't know if Anthony Joshua is fighting again, though. Dillian White has been caught with drug usage, essentially. PED usage. I'm going to try to get the exact terms here, but that fight is no longer happening. And... Anthony Joshua needs a new opponent. And some name, a name that popped up was Haseem Rockman Jr., but I don't know how true that is. He, he's, he fought on the KSI Misfits event, but he's a heavyweight. He's actually a professional boxer. He isn't like one of these crossover one of those guys. influencer guys, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. but he, I don't think he's at that level because uh, he did lose to Greg Hardy. Yeah. But Andy Ruiz Andy. has called him up like, hey, let's get our trilogy going. Technically, he's right. It's 1-1. One, one. It's 1-1. One, one. Yeah, that's true. Um, Joshua doesn't have the belts anymore because Usyk has him now. So, I mean, but Andy Ruiz is right because it is 1-1. So, let's we'll see if they get that going as well. Obviously, yeah. you want to see a Deontay Wilder. I don't want Deontay Wilder now. Like, I, I that <laughs> fight needs to be built up. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, oh, it's been a year since he fought again, like right? Almost a year, yeah. Almost a year. But you want to see that fight eventually down the line. But I don't know how much more down the line can he really go at this rate because, you know, just kind of getting 
kind of getting old. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Dillian White fails drug test um, uh, in London. And voluntary anti-doping association informed. Uh, yeah. So White said he was shocked and devastated to find the test hiding. Uh, I don't know what happens to the food team thing, like kind of like Tati said. Yeah, right. So it's probably like some of the things he probably just didn't wasn't aware of, or it was aware of and just trying to cover up. We, we don't. Yeah, know. we don't know. But Anthony Joshua, let's see. I still want to see him fight Andy Ruiz. Obviously, the rumor was if he had won this fight, Deontay Wilder fight would have happened in December. I don't know if Deontay Wilder was scheduled or close to fighting anyone, but we'll see how that goes. Um, as I alluded to earlier, professional belt. Um, I'm not gonna say the Jake Paul. I'm not going into the fight too much. But Nate Diaz surprised me. That's for sure. Nate Diaz is and he did his classic antics, antics. He does his yeah. gamesmanship, and uh, was absolutely hilarious to watch. Yeah, <laughs> the fight wasn't like anything crazy. Like I thought Jake Paul should have dominated him, and he did in the first round. But that's it. But then no, Nate Diaz just came back. I don't know. Everything I said during that fight with the opposite happened. You're like, yo, okay, it's, it's not going 10 one. rounds. It's mm-hmm. not going 10 rounds. Nate Diaz will make it away. The way he was fighting. Uh, Nate but, Diaz yeah. will find a way to make the fight go the full distance. Yeah, so he, he did that. So either way, we'll see. Um, I'll keep that there. But moving on, let's go to some soccer. Um, World Men's World Cup. And if if you guys haven't, check out our, if especially if you're Canadian, uh, check out our Canada soccer um, reaction. But to be honest, Canada isn't the only team. One of the, they're one of few teams. Uh, one of four, sorry, four out of the top ten teams. Canada's one of them that were eliminated in the World Cup in some way. Yeah. Um, so I mean, Germany and Brazil followed Germany, them. Germany, Brazil, Italy lost to South Africa. But I don't think they're in the top. Yeah, no, like, but that's still an yeah. upset. But USA, who barely survived, like we mentioned last time, like barely, because uh, the 90th minute post from Portugal kept USA in it. Eventually lost to PKs against Sweden, a team that they usually they lost to the last, not the last Olympics, but the Olympics before that. Um, and yeah, um, the, the winning PK you, was like literally, literally like millimeters, over millimeters the line. over the line. Like I think a goalie saved it, hit the crossbar, and like it went in, and the goalie caught it or something. Yeah. So then obviously goal line technology deemed it a goal. Yeah. And, and you can't really throw goal line out. technology. This women's World Cup. You know, as we alluded to before that about Canada during my crazy rant was competition has increased. A it's lot. open. Like it's, it's open ha- competition. It's like USA now. can't be like Carly Lloyd said it herself. Like these guys, girls got to realize that it's no longer USA and everybody. Yeah, they still might be the favorites going into every tournament they play in for sure. But hard work pays off. And clearly Morocco, South Africa, who put up a fight against the Netherlands, by the way, um, Nigeria, Nigeria. Like teams that you'll never usually see, right? Um, Ireland, yeah, they may have not won a game. They still gave Canada and Australia trouble. And they drew Nigeria, right? So th- their teams, Jamaica, for example. Jamaica um, made it, right? So in that sense, yeah, this this has been one of those... Like, it kind of runs the Men's World Cup with the upsets. Yeah, it's kind of like kind of turning around. Uh, so far for results-wise, Spain beat Switzerland round of 16. Uh, Japan won their round of 16 game against Norway, I believe. Uh, Netherlands beat uh, South Africa, like you mentioned. And now, uh, after today's result, which was at 2 a.m., yeah. Sweden beat USA. Yeah, so... Um, I think it's Spain, Netherlands, Sweden, Japan. Who's for the quarters. favorite now in your eyes? For me? I mean... England? They play Nigeria I think England, at 12.30. I think England is the best team remaining, in my opinion. Yeah, because they, they are the recent Euro champs. Um, France is still there. France is still France, there. France, Morocco, revenge for them. <laughs> but, um, Will Morocco re- avenge the men? Sorry, yeah, that way. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I think England's still the I favorite. I think England's the best team. Outside of England... I would I, go with Sweden. Yeah. Two times... They, uh, there are the Olympic finalists. Beat the best team. You got to give them cre- credit there. But, yeah... That's the next game is England to watch, which is at twelve thirty a.m. PST. Uh, which by the time this comes out, the It'll result be already, the result's result already be over. Out. But you know, as we mentioned, the U.S. side of things, like I mentioned, Canada, we don't know how our development's going. At least the U.S. still have the young pieces coming up, right? Coming up, like Jeremy we, Rodman, Sophia Smith, how, or the two names, Mallory yeah, like Swanson. Many, yeah. Um, like uh, how many eighteen to twenty year olds we have coming up? Not really much. No now. one. Really, like the, the ones that we have up are up essentially, yeah. Right, Olivia Smith, 
I know Gabri Carl came just up, but she didn't play. Jordan Heidema and Julia Grosser, are those people? Can they take an extra level step? We'll see, but uh, I'm not going to go too much into that because we already talked about it last part. So if you missed it, check out the last episode or the video we dropped about Canada soccer in general. Moving on, EPL, European season in general, but EPL season is about to start um, this coming Friday. And the to Community kick off Shield. Every story, yeah. Yeah, so Community Shield was today the last final preseason you know it's not part of the major trophies but it's still a trophy nonetheless i'm still two man city good team going at man city versus arsenal now obviously man city represented the fa cup winner side of things arsenal represented the highest league finish i was hoping it was the other way so that means manchester united had a chance to play in this but yeah. um we, we won't go into a full epl re- preview we're gonna do that either next pod and we'll be dropping a special video coming out this week so keep an eye out on that most likely coming out this week and man city bottled it <laughs> they did <laughs> off right? the bat they had one zero erling holland erling oh, holland sorry. was terrible yeah so man city bottled it they were up one nothing in the hundredth what tenth minute of injury time right because well, it was not 110th minute it's 100th minute game ends sorry 100 minute yeah yeah, yeah. Right? no i was thinking i added the 10 on the 100 yeah 100 100th minute so it was like an eight minute added time yeah and it was like a hundred last not, corner kick of the game the essentially minutes. leandro trossard put a shot in that got def- uh, deflected like in and, and uh, right after that de bruyne put a sick free kick in and that just nobody, missed nobody and got to the arsenal end of that. dominated them in the pks essentially yeah a 4-1 pk win and kevin de bruyne hit a crossbar so, so yeah yeah erling holland is he not a big time player <laughs> he's just putting stats up on the small teams apparently i mean same thing last year he shot the community shield and popped off when the season started yeah but yeah so i don't have any doubt for erling holland but one stat is that now he's gone six games in a row without a goal for city which is his longest drought yeah for city i guess so um we'll see um it can he re- replicate what he did last year yeah um i think he will he will there's no way but but we still gotta see the big time moments though now city did get the treble but how much was he a factor in the final game key key word final game final game yeah yeah. he was not obviously the build-up he was there for sure yeah (laughs) build-up he was there he got him there there's no doubt about that all right let's let's go on let's talk every sport let's head up with the mlb and trade deadline happened about a couple weeks ago a week week and a half ago right and let's just update that a bit and the biggest people, the biggest team that people are watching, are the uh, Los Angeles Angels. And oh, ever yeah, since, Angels, the, ever yeah. since the trade deadline, I believe they didn't win a game, six game losing streak. The only game they did win earlier on it was against the Jays in the final game. I and don't they know. Lost the series to one, anyways. Yeah, they lost that the series, and yeah, and they're, they're now five, six or five games behind the Jays, but. They're 500 record now, right? They're less than 500 record now. They lost today? today's loss. They just got swept by the Mariners, Mariners who oh are my. on are a you, heater. Are you serious? We need them. We need the Angels win for Blue Jays' sake. Yeah. So the Mariners are now eight games over 500. The last yeah, when we talked trade deadline, they were just 500. Yeah. And now the Angels are one game under 500. And now Mariners are so two. that those trades do not look right. And my point, and I think you kind of point, is kind of being proven that they should have traded Otani. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess, right? Um Yeah, so th- that's like the one major news from there. Um yeah, Mariners The Mariners jump and then the Angels fall. Angels fall. Uh so Mariners what two games back with Blue Jays now? Three. Three games. Because we also swept the Red Sox. We swept the Red Sox. Obviously we had a poor performance against the Orioles, which screwed us over a little bit in the at least in the title race. One in three, right? Hitting struggle against the Orioles. But I know. When you make no d- deals at the trade deadline, kind of for to get a bat, you kind of put pressure on yourselves internally, hoping Vladdy steps up, Springer steps up, which they Springer did. did. Springer did. Springer did in the massively. Boston. But the main reason why these guys stepped up is because we called a triple A god <laughs> in David Schneider. <laughs> and yeah, David Schneider's the first Blue Jin history to get what seven hits in his first like three, three games. games. He's so, like 7 for 10 or something like, like that. We're like, okay, whatever. David Schneider called up. What's he going to do, right? This team's been shit anyways. Yeah, he had a good triple A year, obviously. He's killing it there, so he deserves a call up. Maybe he'll provide a spark there, get a couple hits in the series. Nope. First at bat, first queer hit, first queer home run in Fenway Park. Two games later, gets another home run outside of Park home run. Yeah. And then 
bunch of RBIs and singles. So, to update the standings right now, the A's or or Orioles, sorry, seventy wins, um, leading the the AL. Texas sixty six wins. Minnesota's leading theirs at fifty nine, which is crazy to say. Tampa four and a half games above the Jays, uh, so six and a half or seven above the Mariners at the top wild card. Astros one game above the J- the final spot, which is the Jays, which three and a half above the Mariners. Jays have the final spot at sixty three wins. The Mariners are two and a half behind the Jays. The Yankees are four and a half behind the Jays. The Red Sox are five behind the Jays. You notice the team I never said yet. Angels. The Angels are seven behind the Jays with those teams ahead of them to jump. So, so yeah, Angels risk. They're going back not. to the old Angels. Like I was mentioning, the curse is still not lifting for them. The risk is not paying off. Obviously, Trout being injured does affect that a lot. But, yeah. Okay, so the NL, we might as well give them some love. Um, the Atlanta Braves and the Orioles are tied at the record, by the way. <laughs> Keep that yeah, in mind. Yeah. So, That's insane. Dodgers are still leading their division. Milwaukee's leading their division. Philly is at six. They're not going to catch the Braves, in my opinion, but they're the they're top of the wild card team. now. Angel, or, or, sorry, the Giants are um, three and a half behind the Dodgers at the second wild card spot, but they're still t- they're tied. The with three the, and a half behind Phillies. No, no they're, they're three and a half behind Dodgers. And Dodgers, they're, but they're tied with the Phillies. They're tied with Phillies for the second. Cincinnati is one and a half behind the Brewers, but they have the third wild card spot, but. Chicago has the same amount of games behind. Like, they don't have the total. So they're tied with Chicago? Yeah. Chicago has two more games still to play. So Chicago Cubs can be in the playoffs. Can not, be in the playoffs. By the next ball. week or so. Uh, Miami's half a game back. Arizona's one and a half a game back. And here's a team. San Diego is two and a half games back now. So it's definitely become this a This is much different because the third wild card team is 59 and 55. And then the Padres are 55 and 56. So it's a much closer gap compared to the Jays, which is 63 and 50, by the way. 63 it's the third wild card spot, the third best team in the division. And then the Angels are seven behind, which is 56. I know, I know, I know, it's going to be nuts. Yeah. So the race to the wire will be nuts. So that's our MLB updates for the playoffs because, you know, we like we should. Some it's, surprises it's came out. August, September. You're like, yeah. Your best baseball is better start now. Yeah. So hopefully the Blue Jays hitting could get continue this and David Schneider is our MVP of the season. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Um yeah, I think that's it for the news part of things. That's our analysis for the day. That's our discussion, sports discussions. So um that's pretty much it. Make sure you guys like, comment, anything you disagree, agree, anything we forgot, anything your comments, anything and uh down below. Uh, make sure you guys subscri- subscribe to the channel. Like Jovan's mentioned many times before we post daily some sort of content daily um and other than that we'll catch you guys in the next one peace Peace.